with millions of tourists every year, highly concentrated employment, and painful congestion. Las Vegas should clearly have high capacity rapid transit. To be clear, that's not cars in a fun, multicolored sewer-sized tunnel, or even necessarily a massive regional rail system, but a well-designed, high-capacity, fast metro rail system. So let's talk about the how and the why. This is a new series where I talk about transit projects that should happen, but haven't. I've really wanted to make this series for a long time, particularly starting with Las Vegas, because it's just kind of crazy that this city, which has so much tourism, such a beautifully organized city layout for rapid transit, and tons of workers going to centralized employment, doesn't have rapid transit really to speak of at all. Now, these ideas are technically fantasies, but they shouldn't be. They're going to be on places that not deserve, but have demand for rapid transit and should clearly have such systems. If you're new around here, this is RM Transit, a channel all about public transportation systems around the world. If you want to support the channel, consider watching this video on Nebula or supporting directly on Patreon. And you can follow all of our transit shenanigans and adventures on Instagram or Twitter. So why Las Vegas? Well, as I mentioned in the intro, the city has literally tens of millions of tourists every single year. A large quantity of whom, like tourists all over the place, arrive in the city without a car. That's something that's only going to increase as future high-speed rail takes a big bite out of all of the people driving in from Southern California. But it's not just tourists. Las Vegas is obviously quite a unique city. You see, a very large number of residents work in casinos, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're working in gambling. If you haven't been to Las Vegas, the casinos are far more than just a bunch of poker and blackjack tables, as well as some roulette and the like. Casinos in Vegas have everything. Massive restaurants and spas, fitness centers, malls, and performance venues for concerts and different types of shows. Tons of people work in and around the casinos, and the casinos are highly concentrated along Las Vegas Boulevard, also known as The Strip. Employment in and around The Strip is already floating around 100,000 people, and as Las Vegas continues to grow and do different things beyond just casinos, that number is only going to increase. Of course, Las Vegas also has tons of massive convention spaces, both freestanding ones and ones that are part of casinos and these host massive global scale events every single year, like for example, the Consumer Electronics Show, also known as CES. At the same time, given the much wider variety of things that are going on on the Strip and in the city as a whole, as well as nearby, that Hoover Dam and Grand Canyon are actually quite close to Las Vegas, let's just say in recent years, the city has been attracting much wider demographic than the traditional let's go gamble and then eat crummy buffet food set. Connecting this all up with rapid transit would actually not require a ton of track and would hit a ton of major destinations, so it's a big win. And a rare opportunity to make a large segment of a major US city far more transit accessible and friendly basically overnight. Thanks to the huge job centralization around the Strip and other central parts of Las Vegas, a huge number of trips could be moved to transit really quickly. Now, at the same time, as we are looking at the Strip, it's worth noting that both to the north and the south of the Strip are other major destinations. For example, at the north is downtown Las Vegas, which isn't exactly Manhattan, but has lots of interesting attractions for tourists and could potentially grow with high density office and residential if it had better transport access. To the south of the Strip, you have both the major international airport as well as the future Brightline high-speed rail station. Now, downtown Las Vegas in particular isn't really comfortably walkable from the Strip and it is a few kilometers away, but it could be made a much more vibrant and accessible place with rapid transit. Overall, the situation with walkability in Vegas is weird. Las Vegas Boulevard in particular is generally very pedestrian hostile, at least in the traditional sense. So much so that the wide highway-like street is mainly meant to be crossed with a variety of pedestrian overbridges and the like. But it is worth pointing out that similar environments do exist in cities in other parts of the world, most notably Asia. However, in Asian cities that have this type of lots of overbridges and a dense street grid below approach, there tends to be rapid transit, which Vegas doesn't currently have. Now, actually going from casino to casino on the Strip isn't always so bad. Sometimes there's direct connections from one building to the next, which provide air conditioning, which is something you really want in Las Vegas, which is a desert and is frequently very hot. Ultimately, you can walk around the Strip, and tons of tourists do. It could be better, but it's also not necessarily always the worst experience today. But rapid transit would supercharge things. 
If you want to know more about walking in Las Vegas, City Nerd, who I will link probably up here, has a ton of interesting videos, as he's actually been living in Vegas car-free for quite some time. Seriously. He's also on Nebula, so just another reason to go check that out. So getting back to transit, clearly so much of the tourist experience, whether you fly or even potentially drive into Las Vegas, is arriving at a hotel on the Strip and then going up and down the Strip while you're staying there and returning to the airport or wherever you came from. Maybe heading to a big sports game or convention sometime on the way. Right now, a crazy number of people arriving at the airport get straight into a taxi or limo to go to their hotel. This isn't just bad because of all of the greenhouse gas emissions, but most people are going to a small number of places, so clearly some form of mass transportation makes a lot of sense. For me, it seems clear that the ideal solution is some form of metro here. Likely a higher capacity one to accommodate demand from multiple branches traveling out further into the city. The core of the system would basically be a 12 kilometer long linear corridor, traveling from downtown Las Vegas along the Strip and then into the airport. It's not a super long corridor, but speed and capacity are critical, so Metro makes a lot of sense. Trams might seem attractive, but they're not going to be particularly fast, and they're going to have a real challenge getting around the strode-filled road network of Las Vegas. Not to mention they probably don't have sufficient capacity for the demand we're talking about. At the same time, regional rail probably isn't justified. The distances aren't all that great, and these stations would be far more expensive. So what do I think an actual system would look like? The first phase would likely run from the railroad tracks near downtown Las Vegas, southeast to the Strip, and then along the Strip to around the MGM Grand. From here, you'd head east and actually pick up another major trip generator at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, before heading south to the airport. A second phase, which you'd want to either build initially or soon after the first, would head south from the initial phase down Las Vegas Boulevard, and then in between the Luxor and Mandalay Bay, traveling over to Allegiant Stadium. This route could then either be extended or built all at once straight south to the Brightline Station. Assuming it's open, of course, by the time this plan gets built, which it may not be. Phase 3 would form the final part of the core network and would serve the Las Vegas Convention Center as a diversion from the main line on Las Vegas Boulevard. This phase would really depend on the Convention Center realizing that cars in a tunnel likely aren't going to meet their long-term transportation needs and are just kind of weird as a transportation solution, but clearly the destination is so big that it makes sense to serve it directly. The diversion route would run roughly between the Venetian and Fontainebleau. Now probably the biggest question worth asking is do you put the line above or below ground? In some places, like over the railway tracks in downtown Las Vegas, it's pretty obvious that elevated makes a lot of sense. And in other places, like near the ends of the runways of the airport, underground or at least at or below grade is kind of your only option. What's more interesting is what you do on the Strip. There are multiple options, of course, but elevating kind of makes a lot of sense to me. For one, you could directly connect to the existing pedestrian overbridges, which should, in theory, make your stations a lot less expensive, since part of the vertical access to them is already kind of built. Elevated construction would also be much easier, and nobody can really argue that on a strip of land that's a few kilometers long and features both a faux New York and a faux Paris, that elevated trains are really detracting from the experience. For this corridor, a stacked layout might be even better because it would make doing branches and diversions even easier, since trains don't need massive flyovers, etc. To be clear, this also wouldn't just be a standard metro system. I think a lot of interesting design changes could be made to make it better suited to Las Vegas. For one, the layout on the trains, which should obviously be automated and would present awesome views of the strip and the surrounding environment while you rode the line. The interior of the trains should offer a lot of room, both for the throngs of passengers coming out of performances and sports games and conventions, but also for people taking their bags from the airport or Brightline station. There's also a lot of wisdom that could be taken from Asian metro systems. For example, presenting announcements and signage in multiple different languages to be more accommodating than, say, a traditional taxi or limousine would be. The stations elevated above Las Vegas Boulevard don't need to be ugly or even utilitarian. They could be cool and attractive. Perhaps you have a unique architectural style for each one that kind of melds with the local casinos, though that does sound a bit weird. Or potentially you do something bold and interesting and modern, with maybe even some neon incorporated. What's for sure is that learnings could be taken from various metro systems in the Middle East that are often fully enclosed and provide air conditioning from when you step in the station to onto the trains themselves. Platform screen doors being a given here. 
As with Copenhagen, which also provides 24 seven service on its automated Metro, I'd say Las Vegas should aim for service all around the clock, since Vegas is obviously a 24 hour city. I'd even argue that overnight service should run rather frequently, probably every 15 minutes or so. What's nice is that the stack layout that I've been mentioning for this system would actually lend itself nicely to 24 hour service, since workers doing maintenance on one track would be naturally separated from the other track where trains would run. You could also likely shift around the service pattern and the particular hours of frequent and overnight service depending on the season and if major events are going on in town. For example, during CES, maybe you want to start frequent service earlier in the morning, while during other times of the year, perhaps it can start a bit later. As you'll know if you've watched the channel for a long time, I'm generally not a fan of universally free fares, especially if public transit is compelling and you've got members of all strata of society riding it. That being said, in the case of Las Vegas, free fares actually might make a lot more sense. For one, it would make the station simpler, less space intensive, and less expensive to construct by not needing giant spaces for fare lines and fare machines. It would also obviously attract more riders if the cost of riding is zero, and at the same time, in a city where a lot of people are drinking, among doing other things, free transit seems like kind of a natural choice. Plus, the main beneficiaries of this service, the casinos along the Strip and the airport, clearly could just pick up the tab for their employees and customers, and if they really want to, could pass on the cost, though that seems like a bad business move. That's because, of course, the airport and the casinos would benefit a ton from a rapid transit option. They would be able to stop running their crappy local gadget bonds that probably aren't so cheap to operate and don't connect to one another, and they could also consider redeveloping some of their massive parking into things that, you know, actually make money, like additional hotel towers or malls or other attractions. This would be a long land on the Strip that would be only more valuable by the location of high-frequency rapid transit. Perhaps the casinos could also pay for portions of the stations to have special finishings that better align with the local casinos, as well as direct connections into their facilities, Hong Kong and TR style. Now, speaking of the actual workers at the casinos, who this transit system would be very good for serving, high quality suburban extensions in four different directions would allow people to easily get to the rail system from all parts of the city. Much of these routes could be built along existing linear corridors or interstates, and so they would be fairly low cost. And at the stations, you could have large enclosed air-conditioned bus terminals, pickup drop-off areas, and some relocated parking from the Strip. Frequent bus service, Toronto style, could then serve these bus terminals and connect people directly to where they live in suburban areas of Las Vegas. Altogether, since it seems that much of such a system could be built above ground, an entire system cost of seven or eight billion dollars, especially if you're actually trying to implement global best practices for things like station designs and the like, is not unrealistic. This is a lot less than some other American cities are spending on transportation projects that would do far less to change the modal share of the city. Ultimately, a metro would transform Las Vegas, a city uniquely well-suited to rapid public transportation, something not many American cities can say. Thanks for watching.